Hello and welcome to the lecture 2 of the series of MS Excel tutorials for beginners. Today we will be covering some basic functions and features of MS Excel which can be applied on numerical data. Uh, first of all you need to remember that what is a function. Uh, remember that a function is a predefined formula that performs calculations using specific values in a particular order. Excel includes many common functions which actually facilitates us a lot in manipulation of data. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at uh, which of the functions we will be covering. Uh, we will be covering these features or functions today. First of all, we'll see how we can find a sum of the data, then how we can apply the average function, after that how we can count a uh, number of items in a specific range. After that we will learn the drop down, drop down list creation and then we'll see how we can apply the sum if function then the count if function and then at the end the count a and i'll tell you what is the difference between a simple count and then count a okay now uh, for simplicity uh, i have already created an excel sheet which contains some data but this data is actually the details of different items sold in a single day along with their corresponding prices these items were sold in the order in which they are given. For example, at the start of the day, a soap was sold for rupees 20, followed by milk, then egg was sold, followed by the soap, then again soap was sold, then uh, a thread uh, followed by sugar, and at the end of the day, the last item sold was milk for rupees 30. Now, we need to find the things which are actually highlighted in red colors. These are the things which we need to find. Now, for example, the first of all, we need to find uh, the sum of sales, the, the total sale of the day. So, how we can do it? We need to, first of all, uh, select the cell in which we want to apply the formula. For example, right now, I have selected the cell B12, as you can see here in the name box. Now, uh, whenever we want to write a formula, we have to start with equal symbol. Uh, and for example, uh, sorry, uh, here we see. Uh, the equal symbol is written, and now... Uh, uh, please note one thing that when I have pressed the equal sign it has actually appeared in the formula bar as well now that will happen whatever formula we write in the cell it will appear in the formula bar and we can also write the formula bar uh, formula straight away in the formula bar right okay so in order to apply the sum function and to find out the sum of these uh, different uh, product sale we need to write s u m and you can see it has already suggested me all the function which start from uh, sum we need to double click on the first function here it is and now we need to select the price uh, or the range which we want to add so this is our first cell which we want to uh, add i clicked on it and without releasing the mouse button i drag it to the last cell here it is now you can see i release it and uh, in the sum uh, inside the uh, uh, round brackets of the sum function the range selected is b4 colon b11 remember that this colon actually represents a range it is showing that these are not two different values rather than it is a complete range starting from b4 to b11 right uh, there is no need to do anything else we just i just press the enter key and here you see the sum is actually created 185 uh, for example, if I change the value from here, I may I make it hundred, uh, I make it ten instead of twenty. So you will see that the sum is also changed. So it's fully dynamic. So I just uh, bring it back to twenty. Okay. So this was the sum function. Similarly, we can apply the average function. Uh, just write the equal sign A V E, and it has actually given me a list of all the functions starting from A V E. I need to go to that second function double click on it and again in just like sales function I need to give it the complete range and here it is I drag it to the last one before to be 11 just press the enter key and now the average sale or the average price of the item sold today is 23.125 right okay <clears throat> total items sold how many items were sold today uh, in other words i need to count the number of items sold uh, what do we mean by this n and this a by n we mean i would apply the count function on these numeric values and by a i mean that i will apply the count function on these textual values or the data which is uh, written using alphabet right 
So uh, when I want to apply the count function using the numeric values, I have the function count, right? So I write is equal to C O U and I need to select this first one. Uh, here it is count. Okay. Now uh, I just need to give it the range. Okay. And I have given it the range and press the enter key. It has given me eight. So total eight items were sold today. Now, if I want to apply the same count function on this data, let's let us try. Is equal to C O U N T count. I've given it this range. Enter. It is giving me zero because why? Although there were eight different values: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But it is giving me zero. Why? Because the count function does not work on textual data. So what we need to do, we just need to remove this function and we have another function count A. Now count A and then select this range, press enter. So now it is giving me the correct values that is 8, right? Okay. Now before uh, going to the next two things, sum of sales of item and sum of item sold, what I need to do, I need to learn how to create the drop down list. Okay. Now, how do we create the drop down list? I'll come here. I'll go to the data tab. Over there, I have this in the data tool group. I have this data validation option. Click on it. Click on the first option, data validation. You can see that this cell actually allows any value. By any value means I can enter anything into that cell. What I need to do, I need to uh, make sure that not any values, but only a specific set of values can be entered in this cell. So what I need to do, I need to click on it and just go to the list and then click on the source and give it the list from where you want to select the data. Here it is. This is our list. I click on this one. Okay. Now here you can see you cannot enter random data on it. It is giving you the value you entered is uh, not valid. You just can you just click on this arrow and you can see only the list which you give as the source is given. Now you can select any item from this list and nothing except that. Okay, so this is easy. I will create it once uh, for one more time at the end of the video so that if there is any problem, you will understand it. Okay, some of sales item now. What I want to know is that although uh, soap was uh, sold for rupees 20, but what if I want to know that what is the total sum of the sale of soap? For example, the soap was sold once, twice and thrice. So the total is, or sum of sales of soap is 20 plus 20 plus 20, 60. So what if I only want to add up the uh, uh, price or the sale price of a particular item for that function i have the uh, for for that feature i have the function sum if now how do you apply the sum if function come here is equal to we have sum from there you can select the sum if option now you have three different you can see you have three different parameters first of all you need to give it the complete range from which you find the uh, from which you uh, try to find out the uh, sum of a particular item. So this is our complete range. The range is given comma. The second um, uh, demand or the second parameter is criteria like which uh, what is the criteria how we should select a particular item. So we will select that particular item from the drop down list. So the drop down list is created uh, in C16. Okay C16. Um, so we will actually give it the C16 and the third thing is sum range from where you want to find the sum. I want to find the sum from this very range. Okay. Now I select it. Now see what if you remember I give you an example of the soap. So when I select soap it is giving me 60. Why? Because the soap was sold three times and every time it was sold for rupees 20. Now it is giving me. Uh, 20 plus 20 plus 20 60 just for example let's talk about milk uh, milk was sold once and twice and the total sum of the uh, sale price of milk is 30 plus 30 
so let's see select milk from there you can see it doesn't change because it is the uh, 60 let's talk about some other one for example um, egg egg was sold only once so when i select egg it will give me 10 similarly uh, what about sugar sugar was sold once milk only milk and soap were uh, sold more than once so uh, whatever item is sold more than once it will when you select soap it gives you 60 when you select milk it gives you 60 when you select some other uh, item so it will thread thread was sold only once and that price is 5 so uh, the sum if function is used to find the corresponding sum of a particular item not all the items same is the uh, same is the case with the count of items sold for example, how many items were sold in total? So there were eight total items. But if I ask you that how many times the soap was sold? So again, or how many times the milk was sold or how many times the sugar was sold? So for that, you are actually counting the sale of a particular item, not all the items. For that, you need to again use a function count if. So is equal to count if again the same thing first of all give it the range this is our complete range okay comma next it wants the criteria now for criteria i will again use the drop down list that whatever item is selected in the drop down list it should show me the account of sale of those items so it was actually the, uh, the drop down list was created in cell c16 so i selected it enter it okay you can see right now thread is selected the total sum of sales of thread is five then it was sold you can see sold only once so here it is written once when i go to soap it should change to three here you see as the soap was sold three times so now it has the count of items sold has changed to three similarly when i go to milk the count of items sold was two because the milk was sold twice and for example when i go to egg egg was sold only once so it will change to one so now these two these two cells the values of these two cells are actually dependent on the value of this drop down list okay i hope it is clear so as i promised you that i will once again or for just for your clarity i will create the drop down list so uh, let's uh, for example let's create a drop down list on this e7 so i told you to go to the data tab press in the data tools group press the data validation option and uh, uh, tell it that uh, you want to select an item from the list over here just click it remove that list and give it another list for example this time we give it this list press this one press ok and now you can see the drop down list is created it depends upon you whichever range you select as the source it will be the values of those range will actually occur in this drop down list and you can select one of them i hope it is clear in the next few videos we will be actually uh, <clears throat> exploring more features and functions of ms excel stay tuned thank you very much students